Uh, the first question, though, I'll dive in to our first question. And if anyone has further questions, just open up that chat box, type them in. We already have one. Um, and again, Bob, this is your opinion and expertise. And if you don't feel comfortable answering any of them, we can pass. But oh. <laughs> the first <laughs> question is how will SAS power be affected with the projected rise in pollution pricing to $170 per ton by 2030? Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's something that's crossed my mind as well. And there's a separate set of regulations related to um, electricity generation. But if the feds really wanted to make sure that SAS power was off hydrocarbons by 2035, all they need to do is make that $170 uh, per ton uh, apply directly to SAS powers generating facilities. And uh, that would make the uh, cost of gas fired electricity prohibitively expensive and uh, would certainly ac accelerate the transition to, uh, to renewable power. I, you'd like to think that um, uh, there, there's a better solution than doing it that way, but that's certainly what I could visualize as a, as a possible future. At the, at the extreme. Okay, next question. Uh, with regards to the gas powered plant issue, is it possible to fuel switch, fuel switch natural gas plants to something like biofuel? The quick answer is I don't know for sure. Uh, I have looked into the idea of using uh, hydrogen and natural gas plants. And at the moment, the, uh, the gas plants that are using any hydrogen at all, it's about a 5% or 10% mix. Uh, um, so in, a, in effect, you have to design a, a natural gas power plant to run on hydrogen, and that hasn't been done yet. I know the Germans are looking at that, and uh, I think some of the states are looking at it as well. But in terms of biofuel, um, you know, it, it's not a... It's not a bad idea because, um, you know, airlines are experimenting now with biofuels in jet engines on aircraft and, um, you know, basically a gas turbine to generate electricity is nothing more than a giant jet engine. So that's a, that's a good thought and I'll take, uh, I'll dig into that a bit more. Appreciate the suggestion. Okay, next question. What is your current view regarding SAS Power's demand side management program? If there is one and how would you improve it? Yeah, it's, um, there is one. Um, it, some years ago, SAS Power had a, um, an aspirational goal of uh, saving 350 megawatts in, um, in capacity in effect through demand side management. And that was reduced by the current government to 150 megawatts. You know, that 300 is kind of nice again because it's, it's one increment in their usual power supply. But anyway, the current government reduced that to 150 megawatts. The corporation has now met that target, but they haven't set a new target. And so they, there's certainly, um, you know, the SES report certainly talks about demand side management and the need to, uh, move ahead on that as well. But I don't think demand side management gets them through the natural gas power generation problem. It's a, it might save them one increment of a new capacity, but it certainly improves their flexibility. It also, if it's done properly, uh, allows you to um, smooth out demand in the course of a day because there are a number of uh, energy efficiency and conservation things that can be done uh, through smart meters and other technology to smooth demand. And uh, so it's, it's certainly something to keep in mind and not lose sight of. Okay, um, next question. No mention of microgrids and local battery storage, home or neighborhood and virtual power plants, VPPs. Are these concepts on your radar and what are your thoughts? Yeah. The, um, it's certainly part of it's part of a, um, a solution, if you like. But generally, that 
um, you know, the, the sort of local power generation on that scale tends to be uh, people want to get off grid or just um, make a statement that they don't need SAS power very much. And uh, I think there are things along that line that need to be investigated. I, I like to think of um, district heating as one possibility, for example. But, um, you know, these, I think the future of power generation in the province will be much more distributed than the, the large plants in two or three locations that we have now. And uh, so we're going to end up with a, a more of a distributed power input to the grid. And for that reason, we need a, a smarter grid to handle those variable inputs. And, uh, you know, and I think uh, part of that smartening up of the grid should lead to, um, you know, the, the ability to accept uh, uh, power from various uh, self generators and uh, feed it into the system as well. It could well be that uh, a generation or two down the road that SAS power is a power distributor, not a power generator. And uh, we have to think about that and uh, whether that's the kind of future we want to see. And uh, so we, uh, you know, and every power company, of course, has to cover their costs. So that's a, that's a huge transition. So I'm, I'm not dismissing the, the microgrids and uh, small uh, power supply notion. It's, uh, there's a piece of it there, but there's also a need to look at the big picture and, uh, as I say, be able to accept uh, significant disparate sources of power, get them to where the power is needed and uh, manage the uh, overall demand. Oh, and a follow-up comment. It is definitely the kind of future we need, split SAS power and distribution and generational. So just gonna share that. Um, there won't be a transcript available of the chat, but this recording will capture all of the questions and answers and comments once it's posted on YouTube. So any other questions? Last chance to add them to the chat and pick Bob's brain a little bit more. Oh, here's one. How do you recommend citizens engage to push for the change needed? Do you have any advocacy tips? Well, uh, uh, one obvious one is get out and vote. But, uh, you know, I, th I think, um, there's some very specific things that could be done at a citizen level. Uh, and I'm speaking for myself now, not for SES, but uh, um, you know, Ontario Hydro, bless their souls, uh, got into all kinds of grief, but you know, they used to have a big slogan uh, that they used everywhere. And I lived in Ontario at one time, which was power at cost, you know, but, but, the, but in effect, the utility had a goal. And you know, if you read the SAS power legislation, it doesn't have a goal. And so it'd be, you know, I think we could advocate for um, very specific uh, goals for the corporation that could be embedded in legislation. And, uh, you know, that's a long, slow struggle, but it's uh, mm -hmm. something to, uh, to consider. I think as well, the, um, I used to work in government and, uh, and ministers may not read letters, but they, they count them. And uh, so, uh, you know, uh, ministerial staffers will say, we've received X number of letters on this issue and uh, the public's really concerned about it and maybe you should make an announcement minister. And, uh, and also the staffers uh, toss out all the form letters. So you have to, you have to be able to um, generate a letter that looks um, original or at least but somewhat original. And uh, so I, I've, I've never, um, discounted the, the thought in all seriousness of writing politicians and saying what you think, because for one thing, they may or may not read the letter, but staffers do. And uh, sometimes those things get communicated within the organization. So, you know, so that, um, that kind of stuff is, um, I think is, is valid. And uh, I've been an inveterate letter writing writer over the years, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but it, it doesn't hurt to try. The other thing is to, um, you know, to advocate for 
very specific ways forward. And I think, um, you know, if we, if, um, if SES is, is right, that uh, a big investment in expanding solar is a, is a necessary way forward on this, then encouraging the corporation to, uh, to really look hard at solar is, is one way to do it. Or alternatively, right now, they have a public consultation process on this proposed new gas plant and uh, you're writing a letter that says uh, you're going up the wrong, barking up the wrong tree or words to that effect might be a, a way to deal with that specific issue. But, uh, but I, I've, uh, it takes patience and, I, and I've always, just my nature perhaps, but uh, I've never yelled at a minister yet, but I, I have talked to them and I've tried to tell them what I think in a fairly polite way. And uh, I know sometimes it's frustrating, but uh, I think, uh, you know, dealing directly with uh, elected politicians and staffers is a uh, worthy of ex exercise. And I think dealing with SAS Power, I should say, I, to give SAS Power some credit, um, they have a number of consultative processes going on and take, having the patience to uh, work through those and uh, provide input is, I think is a worthy exercise as well. I think someone posted the link to one of those consultation sites too, further up in the chat. So okay. scroll up if that's your kind of speed, your kind of advocacy. Um, one last question and then we'll do some, some wrapping up. Uh, SAS Power presents using flare gas as an environmentally relatively safe source of power. Would you agree with this? What are your thoughts? There, there are some special cases uh, where, you know, for, you know, venting and flaring is a huge issue on uh, the hydrocarbons from the oil and gas industry. And, um, and it seems nonsensical to just flare gas and burn it up without uh, putting it to some useful uh, um, purpose. And, uh, you know, in Alberta, there's a, a pretty significant effort to collect uh, the, the gas that comes up with the oil and uh, route it to a centralized spot so it can be used as gas. And, I, and there, there's those, those kind of things uh, are quite um, reasonable and possible. The, the uh, oil fields in Saskatchewan are a little bit different and the oil industry will say it can't be done, but uh, my understanding mm -hmm. is if uh, the way to approach that is that the, the oil producers in Saskatchewan that are headquartered in Alberta have a better sense of uh, what can and should be done. If you deal with an oil company that's based only in Saskatchewan, uh, they're still uh, back in the 1950s to the most extent. So, uh, but dealing with some of the Alberta oil companies in Saskatchewan, might be one way to get at some of those problems. Just as a sidebar to um, um, SAS Gas, you know, the, the company supplies our natural gas also um, does some micro power generation at their, uh, pump, at their pumping stations. So I I'm, could be a little bit wrong, but I think they're, they're generating a, a significant amount of power, which they then use to pump the gas. So, yeah. and again, it's a waste heat kind of process. So. There are some smart things going on, but we need more smart things. Always, always more smart things. Uh, Katya, do you have?